When you build a new house, you shall make a parapet for your roof so that you do not bring blood guilt on your house if anyone should fall from it. This might be a little puzzling to us because most of us live in, roof, in houses with sloped roofs and we don't spend a lot of time up there. But that wasn't the way homes were in this time period and place. Roofs were flat and they were used as additional space to eat or sleep in the hot weather. You could get a breeze. Sometimes to work, like um, if you were treating flax to make linen, it was a smelly process, so you would put it up on the roof rather than down in your home. So people spent a lot of time on the roof, and it was natural then to say, you really should build a fence around the roof so that if you're working or living up there, you don't fall off. And it sparked this interesting debate among the rabbis in the Gemara. In Shabbat 32, Rabbi Ishmael taught, he was destined from the sixth day of creation to fall and die. One might think a person's death is predetermined. I could build a fence, but if fate has decreed that this man should die by falling off a roof, what good does it do? And so the rabbis argue over this idea of what good does it do to build a fence around your roof if someone is destined to die, and they say, A, we can't be fatalists. We can't say that nothing we do, do matters. And B, they say, even if, even if there's just fate turning the wheel and you can't prevent this person from falling off a roof, do you really want to be a part of his demise because you couldn't be bothered with the time and expense it took to put a fence on the roof? It's an interesting conversation. Sometimes we feel like what we do doesn't matter, that overwhelming forces are bent on destruction, that we can't change fate. But this verse says, you know what? We still are obligated to do what we can to prevent harm. And then Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 9. Lo tizrach you shall not sow your vineyard with a second kind of seed, else the crop from the seed you have sown and the yield of the vineyard may not be used. So I did come amid, across a midrash that was, I found it entertaining. They said, why are we commanded to build houses with roofs that have a fence before we build our vineyards? And they said, well, after you build the vineyard, there might be a little drinking and you'll be more likely to fall off your roof, so make sure you've built the fence first. But that's not exactly the direction I want to head with it. Um, Ramban points out that seeds of mixed breeding, while they might make a bumper crop this year, are often sterile in future years. The seeds that that crossbreeding produces can't regenerate themselves, sort of like a mule. A mule is a great animal. It's a combination between a donkey and a horse, and it has good qualities of both, but mules are unable to produce other mules. And so the Ramban, Nachmanides, who told us, by the way, to be careful about not eating the mother bird and the eggs at the same time, he says the short-term benefit of planting these seeds together doesn't outweigh the long-term cost. And that indeed is the thread that ties these three halachot together. In the long term, it's better to preserve either the mother bird or the eggs, even if you're hungry for both in the moment. And in the long term, it really is better to have a fence around your roof so no one falls off, even though in the short term, it's annoying and time-consuming and expensive to continue construction on a house that's almost complete. And in the long term, it's better to grow crops that you know can generate themselves year after year, even though in the short term, getting a bumper crop from the combination might be beneficial. And perhaps that's really the point of all the meets vote that we do that they ask us to think beyond what we're craving and desiring in the moment 
to look up and see the long-term effects of the choices we make and to restrain our appetites accordingly.